Hi everybody, today we're going to look at making this self-discovery microscope slide pendant. This is Bristol paper, it's very smooth. It is thick enough that it can hold a little bit of uh, watercolor uh, if I want, or I could do some heavier marker work on it. As you can see, I have a little setup of supplies here which I'm going to be pulling from. But the first thing I want to do is kind of decide what my theme is going to be for my piece. If I wanted to sit down and do some meditation first before I started this and just kind of tap into how I was feeling and sort of think about this artwork as a almost like a talisman, something that, you know, I might not want to wear it all the time, but I might keep it on my wall. I might have it as a reminder of things that I was working towards, some goals, or like almost like an, a personal emotional extension of myself that I can refer to and think some part of what I'm working on or what I'm working towards is I've, I've put that into this piece. Uh, I like put a little bit of juju <laughs> on there and it's holding something for me. I'm imbuing this piece with some aspiration or hope or some element of myself that I'm working on. It could be abstinence. It could be forgiveness. Um, doesn't have to be those things. But what we want to get, the, the main essence of this piece is we want to feel like we're putting something of ourselves into it. We're letting ourselves be available to the outside world onto a piece of paper we, we want to make a little container for ourselves here, have it external. Our pendant artwork is one inch by three inches. The, the slides, the microscope slides, here we have them. So you could see, you could put it down and you could draw around the slide and, and outline it. Or you can just start drawing a little bit here and use a cutout to go over what you've drawn to see what framing you like. I'm not going to think too much. I basically know what area I'm going to use, what feelings I'm going to sort of pull out and just let them go. When I work, I don't tend to think about words too much or about expectations of others. I sort of set my own goals and expectations. keep my space nice and protected around me. I put up my boundaries so that it's just me here. I'm not bringing in the voice of other people who are going to say, ooh, oh, what's she doing? Oh, oh this is, she's stupid. <laughs> she can't draw. She doesn't know what she's doing. She's not good enough. And I'm pretty serious about kicking that out of my head because when I decided this was my path in life to be an artist, I realized that I couldn't do it wanting to please other people. I could only do it wanting to please myself. So, um, and I think that that's pretty much a good definition for an artist. Somebody who is um, really communicating with themselves not getting too tripped out by others. It's just too much weight to carry, you know? So, I just do what I do. And if people like it, well, that's just fantastic. And if they don't, I just don't care. <laughs> Life is far too short 
to give other people that much power. Yeah, you could try to please everybody all you want. Does not mean that it's gonna make your life better. This is watercolor pencil. So, this is one reason that I recommend using a um, mixed media or watercolor paper or something like this. So something thicker and um, easier to, uh, to add different mediums to. This just becomes fluid. So you can start adding layers. I mean, I'm certainly not sure where I'm going with this right now. I just know that I want to make a unique creature. I want there to be something unique about this creature that I relate to. You know, that makes me feel less alone in the world. You know, we're all so unique and we have so many things about ourselves that maybe just in general the culture or society might not appreciate, but when we learn how to express that uniqueness, it it actually frees us up a lot. Uh, it takes time you to be patient with that kind of thing. Okay, so I feel like I'm pretty good with this uh, artwork on this side now so I'm just going to take my slide and just show you it's probably going to be framed like this. Um, if I want to see how it's looking without any clutter I can just um, put my little frame over there. I'm just going to show you the what is the most accessible tool to use which is a pair of scissors. Uh, I, the, the edges are not going to be totally visible because we'll have this little frame going around it. And, and you know, keep that in mind, like I don't want this part to get cut off by that frame, so I am going to move it up just slightly so I don't get that cut off by the frame. So this side, you know, I just sort of, I was thinking about you know, companionship and um, wanting to welcome into my life some forces that are unique and uh, that, that, that suit me. I'm just going to continue with that theme on the other side. This time I'm going to start with my pen and just be a little bit more bold. flowers. Just the idea that flowers exist in the world and they have so many beautiful colors and uh, shapes. Where did those colors and shapes come from? Who thought of those flowers? They're all just uh, developing and evolving and I really like that sentiment for my piece here. Okay, so here we are back with our artwork. Let's just um, finish getting it trimmed. Once again, this is a, uh, once you put this together and see how the edges are covered. As long as you have all of the paper in sandwiched inside the two pieces of glass, that's what we want because uh, if it's sticking out at all, it won't, um, the, the tape won't go over it evenly. 
I uh, don't feel any paper coming out on any of the sides here. So I'm going to show you the Mod Podge. Now you can use this or you cannot use this. This is a sealer. We're also going to use this with our beads, but um, it's a water-based sealer. Uh, the, the only issue with using this is that um, if you're using watercolor here like I did, you might have a little difficulty with that. It might start um, pulling some of the watercolor up if it's not well integrated. But um, I'm going to go ahead and just use some of this matte. It doesn't matter if you use matte or gloss, but um, just a really tiny bit here. to go just to go over this real quick and then I'm gonna just let it sit and dry okay so we have a Mod Podge on both sides piece and um, don't do it real thick just do one smooth coat and don't try to experiment with putting these back up on here until this is absolutely thoroughly dry. So we've got our pieces, sandwiching them together. Now the next thing we want to do is get our copper tape. So six, seven, eight. I, if you, this is going to be about a 16 inch piece of copper tape. I always just, I give myself just a little bit more. So I'm going to give myself just a little bit more. This, this tape, it tears really easily. You want to peel it. It's got a backing here. Sometimes it can be hard. Now, this paper is all obviously going to be taken away and then you have the sticky side. Try with all of your might not to get your fingers on this sticky side because this is actually what's going to keep it really uh, bound to the glass. So if you feel that you need to wipe your glass off if you've got um, fingerprints or anything, now is the time to do it. So okay, I've sandwiched my little artwork together. I have this tape open. This is the sticky side. Now I'm going to go just over the corner here, holding it as together as I possibly can. And I'm just going to place it there just for one second. And then I'm going to turn it so I can look to see if I've got an equal amount of tape on the one side as I have on the other and that is not quite right so I'm just going to pick it up and move it over and just check and see if it's fairly fairly equal. We want to start it off right and it's easier just to work with a small piece of the tape like this and once you think you've got something that looks kind of okay, you can just push it down on either side like that. Holding everything together, keeping some tension on that. Okay, so I'm then just going to take this backing and pull it down just to where I'm going, alright? And I always want to be looking on the left and right to see if I'm getting a good... Uh, a good measure of it on both sides. We don't want it to be wrinkled or bunched. We don't want to put our hands on the tape at all. We want to keep it, um, you know, keep it as straight as possible. Keep it as even.
you can see we have a fair amount of our piece already trimmed with the copper tape. So I'm going to just turn it over again. And I've got my finger back here. I'm, I'm holding my tension there. I'm trying to keep as much control over the tape as possible. And I'm also really looking at how I'm going to situate this. That it's going to be equal distance on both sides. And it looks really good. So I'm just going to fold that over a little bit. Pinch that and start working on the next long side here. So I'm holding it so I could pull this tape, tape backing off, but I have really good control over this piece. I'm, I've got my fingers back here. I'm pressing against the frame on both sides. Looks like I'm a little off. And it's okay to uh, take your time I've got some reflections going here, so it's a little hard for me to see, but um, I hope you can see. All right, so when I fold down the sides, I can see I'm doing a pretty good job of keeping that um, fairly equal there. <clears throat> now, technically, you only really need to go around this piece once. This tape really isn't going to come flying off of here or anything, but I think just because um, we're not doing another process on this like typically with this copper tape I would take my soldering iron and I would go over <clears throat> this copper tape and I would make this one solid piece of metal everywhere you see copper would then be a silver type of metal um, which makes it very strong so makes it very permanent whereas this tape you know is just um, it's very strong very sticky but we're going to do two layers of it around our frame. And it should get easier as, it, as you go along. <laughs> Sometimes it gets harder. You think, oh, I'm getting good at this. And then, and then it all goes in the dumper. So, looks okay. Now you don't have to do this this uh, second layer if you don't want. You can just do the one layer and the world will not explode. Um, I gave myself a little more room so it looks like my end piece is going to come up on this side. I'm just going to push everything down. I'm going to push the corners in sideways a little bit. Everything pushed in. I am thinking that I made that look pretty darn easy. And after you do it a couple of times, you're going to be like, yeah, yeah, it was easy enough. But maybe the first few times it's going to be kind of harder and you're going to get frustrated. Just take a deep breath and start again if you need to. Sometimes you can't use the uh, tape that you started to use because you lifted it up too much or it got tangled in your fingers and um, it's just not uh, sticking. So don't be too hard on yourself. So right now I'm just going through with a pen and I'm just burnishing these little creases down. And you know this tape is um, it's strong, but you don't want to push it so hard that you rip it. You just want to push it hard enough so that you see the wrinkles disappear. And just be a little more careful around these corners. Let's just go around all your edges like that. And you know. If you want to skip the whole Mod Podge process of sealing this, um, that might be something to think about in the future. I, I just I think there's more that can go wrong with that than right because as I'm looking at this, I can see that there 
it um, creates a little bit of depth and that depth you can see against the glass. I don't think I could really show it to you on camera. Maybe you could see like this little spots on there. Might find that highly irritating. That is from the Mod Podge sitting up a little bit on the, uh, the artwork. So um, if you skip that, that process, uh, good for you because you might save yourself a little bit of trouble there. All right, man, this is what we got. This is our pendant that has the copper foil around it. It's even on the sides. We've burnished it for the most part. I'll go over that again probably. And I'm gonna come back in just a second and show you how to attach the bale. So I ordered some of these uh, little bales. They're little teardrop shape um, bales to attach to our pendant so that we will be able to um, hang our necklace. Now, this is a, a design uh, thing. You have to decide for yourself how you want this to go. This, this looks better to me on this side. It matches some of my shapes here to see the bale like this, because this, this is a two-sided pendant, so I could wear it either way. And then it doesn't interfere with this little bird-type face I have over here. I don't have to put it right over that. So. As you're doing your piece, you might want to think about that, that you're going to have this little obstruction. This is DevCon Home 5-Minute Epoxy Clear, and it really means 5 minutes. This stuff will set up hard as a rock in 5 minutes. So it's two parts. It's a resin and a hardener. And once you um, put the little amounts out and you mix them up, you have to mix them, you know, so they're well incorporated, but it's going to set really fast. So... You could do a ton of these with a tiny little bit of resin and it'll go pretty quickly, but you don't want to mix up too much resin, all right? So just want to put it over your mixing area and let's see if I can get it. Yeah, there it goes. See how we've got two little, just a little amount there. And I'm just going to take a toothpick and I'm going to incorporate those two together and I'm just going to mix to make sure It is really incorporated. And sometimes, you know, if you're doing some bigger projects or let's say you get really into these and you want to sell them and you want to lay a bunch of them out, you could set a timer on how long you have for this resin before it sets up. So you can work really fast with this. So here I have it right on the edge of my um, toothpick. I don't want to put too much because it's going to slop over those edges. These bales are made with this little, uh, it has a texture on it so that it'll grab on a little bit easier. Really don't need more than that. Don't want to get this stuff on your hands. If you do, it's not the end of the world. Do your best. And uh, just get it you know, get it where you want it, get it in the middle. I see that it's gone out and gone over a little bit. That actually doesn't bother me too much, but I might try to clean it up a little. Okay, and we're back with our bale uh, resined onto our piece. And I did go a little bit closer in with uh, the corner of a paper towel, just to neaten that up a little. Uh, I would say using less is better there. But I did make sure I got the resin sort of touching up, um, you know, not just here on this part, but just so it, there's enough resin in there so it's holding all the way. So if there's pressure on this, we're not gonna have it pop off. But you could see, um, this stuff uh, really sets up. Even given that though, don't go ahead and put this on your necklace yet or start working with your thread yet. Just put this aside. Let it, let it just uh, rest for, you know, several hours if not a whole day and we'll get back to it when we do the next um, video. 
when we begin to work on the paper beads and do the necklace piece of this project, our self-discovery microscope slide. But um, I did want to talk a few minutes here at the end of the video about some of the options that you can do. I've taken the most basic approach here to this project that I've come up with. There are so many ways that you can go deeper with this. You could do uh, painting on one side of a piece of paper, do another painting on another piece of paper, and on the back of each of those pieces of paper, do like a little emotional exploration, some writing in there, uh, or really um, put some write some intentions on those on the insides of those pieces of paper and sand sandwich them together in here like a little prayer. Uh, you would be the only one who knew what was in there. And you could put some little um, note in there, some flat note, as long as everything is flat, uh, you're, you're golden. You just don't want to put anything that's going to put pressure on these uh, two pieces of glass. But this could be a collage piece. You could um, cut out uh, some tiny little words from magazines. You can obviously, the whole thing could be words. Um, you could do a poem here. It's just the, the options here are endless. I just really hope you have fun experimenting with this, finding ways to really put yourself into a piece of wearable art. I am going to have two more videos. The next one will be uh, how to do make the paper beads and how to also lay out the artwork for that so that you're imbuing those with a part of yourself as well. It's another part of the self-discovery. Third part of, of this series will be how to design and lay out your piece with waxed linen as the uh, necklace piece where we add some more dimension. So thank you very much. I hope that this was useful and that you could see everything that we were doing here. And good luck with your piece, and I hope that I get to see someday what you've done. Okay, bye.